G'day guys, Rukshan here. Thanks for joining me for the news vlog. I hope you're all having a lovely day. In a development to a story I've been talking about over the last couple of days that will not shock you or surprise you, the teenager that's been accused of the alleged stabbing and charged for as well of the 70-year-old grandmother in Queensland that was allegedly stabbed and killed in front of her six-year-old granddaughter, very tragic story, was out on bail at the time. Now, I'm not surprised. I'm not shocked. And I'm sure many of you at home watching are not surprised or shocked either because every time we hear about this type of youth violence by these teenagers, these groups, you find out that they were already on bail for another crime that they've committed. That's a very similar crime. There's a pattern of crime that's happening here. So let's read this article and I'll give you some of my thoughts. This is from The Australian. Queensland stabbing accused was free on bail. The alleged teen killer of a Queensland grandmother was on bail for robbery when he allegedly stabbed the 70-year-old in a car park on Saturday night. The 16-year-old appeared in Ipswich Children's Court on Tuesday, charged with the stabbing death of a former religious instruction teacher, Wiley Invite, in front of a six-year-old granddaughter at the Town Square Red Bank Plain Shopping Centre, west of Brisbane. The alleged teenager killer, who cannot be named for legal reasons, was charged last year with a robbery offences. Now, I've done some more research into this, and it looks like it's multiple robbery offences related to armed robbery. Um, that's what I'm seeing from the reporting online. You can correct me if you think that's wrong, but widely reported that it's multiple offences that he was let out on bail for. Sources have told the Australian that police had late last year opposed bail for the teenager and that he was later released. So this is where I'll stop this. And I'll say, if that is true, which it appears to be based on a lot of the reporting I'm seeing, that police had told the judge that this particular individual should not be out in the public by you know, she should not receive bail for this uh, serious armed robbery that he's been charged with in this instance. And then he was let out by the judge. Wiley and White's fate, in, in with whatever way you want to look at this, was sealed at that point because it is then the same individual who has allegedly gone on to commit a very similar offence, this time to hijack or carjack this lady's Hyundai gets. That's the allegation that at that point, he also allegedly killed her in the process of committing a very similar offence to which he was let out for originally from bail when the police had said don't give him bail right so really the justice system failed Wiley and White of course the alleged killer bears most if not all the responsibility for this but the justice system also does so this lady here Wiley and White she was let down by the justice system in Queensland and we're seeing this breakdown of justice systems all over the country. Now, the Queensland Premier, Chris Mills, he was asked about, Stephen Mills, sorry, was asked about this. And there's a clip doing the rounds of him, you know, laughing about this direct question. Let's have a look at that. The absence of any reference to youth crime. In the absence of any reference to youth crime in your speech to the Queensland media club would have been noted <laughs> uh, by more than a few, including the people of those communities. Premier, I'm sure you can see the last two summers have been bookended by the murders of young mother, Emma Lovell, and just three days ago, grandmother, Violaine White, her daughter, Denise. So look, I think he realised there towards the end, it's not a good look to be laughing when asked about this issue, particularly based on the circumstances of what Wileen White's family is going through and the fact that this 70-year-old lady has just, you know, been brutally murdered in front of her, her granddaughter, for Christ's sakes, right? And his reaction as the Premier when directly asked about an issue with youth crimes, I think, is inappropriate. Now, he's saying that he was laughing about the fact that this journalist was asking him these questions at a housing, um, you know, a, a speech about housing. But at the end of the day, this guy is the Premier. He's being asked a very direct question for something he's responsible for. And that's his reaction. So it's not a good look. Uh, the community, according to The Guardian, especially the African community, so these teen and the teen, other teens that were arrested in connection to this um, killing as well, are from the African community there in Ipswich, in, in Brisbane. And this is their reaction. Queensland's African dysphoria are community you, you, under siege as teenager versus murder charges of a fatal stabbing of a 70-year-old. This is from The Guardian. We are a community under siege at the moment because of this tragic incident, says Benny Ball, a refugee from South Sudan and a leader among Queensland African dysphoria. Uh, he also went on to say, Ball, the president of the Queensland African Communities Council, told Guardian Australia that incidents targeting African people had become worrying. He has told workers at the African Centre in Red Bank Plains near where the stabbing occurred to stay away after some said they had experienced abuse while heading to work on Monday. 
Over the last 24 hours, I've received a large number of reports of people who are being physically attacked while going to work shopping. I've had, have had a story of a young African girl who went to the shop and saw some throw, someone throw something at her. Your monkeys go back to where you came from. The commentary on social media, I can't even talk about it. The level of stress that's causing to the community, that's unacceptable. Children are refusing to go to school because of the fear. Too many people have been abused. So you're seeing this is having the, another effect on the African community there as well. But this is a complex issue. And a lot of this stems from the fact that there's poor leadership around this, that the justice system is not addressing these type of crimes. Uh, it, it appears like in some instances, the community is not a, a addressing these type of crimes. And it appears maybe even the parents of, of these children are having issues around dealing with this type of delinquency, dealing with this type of uh, crimes as well happening in the community. And I say that. Not, uh, I'm not just assuming that, because when the mother of the boy was interviewed by Channel 9, her answer is kind of uh, interesting considering the fact that this boy was out on bail for other crimes as well. Let's have a listen to her answers. Today, Nine News spoke to the teenager's mother. I'm sorry to the community because I didn't know that um, the kids do that. Apologetic and shocked, and like many other mothers would, she tried her best to defend her son, recalling the moment police led him away. She said, I love you, Mum, yeah. She then had this message to the family of Violin White. Do you feel sorry for them? Um, yeah, I feel sorry about that, yeah, because he's so bad. The accused is a refugee from Sudan. His family arrived here 16 years ago. He was just a baby. My family is good family. Look, the mother's been put on the spot there, most likely by these news media people. Whether that's appropriate or not, uh, we can have a discussion around that as well. But And her understanding might be lacking around these type of issues. But, you know, she says she comes from a good family and that uh, she didn't know that the kids were getting up to this kind of thing. How can she not know her son was, you know, not facing these other charges and on bail at the time? And now she had no idea of that. Again, it comes down to parenting as well. I don't like to blame parents for the actions of kids because kids do, do, do things secretly. Of course, they do these type of things. But you need to be aware of the type of activities your children are involved in, especially when it comes to things like involvement with the police. Like, it's very hard to see that she would not have an idea about his involvement in other serious crimes like this. That's just my opinion. Now onto the next story. This is very similar to the Rip Curl story we discussed a couple of days ago on my show. This time it looks like Bonds, uh, another Australian brand originally, has decided to join the party. Let's have a read of this article. Bonds faces backlash after using a non-binary model with a beard to show off its latest bikini. Aussies are vowing to boycott Bonds after the underwear company used a bearded non-binary person to model a bikini. The iconic Australian underwear brand used two non-binary models with they them pronouns to advertise its $18.99 retro rib seamless tonal high bikini as a part of its Pride 2024 range. The collection is aligned with a Pride campaign showcasing transgender models, drag queens, as well as people who identify as gay, bisexual and pansexuals. But one of the models, Mikey, who is 1.99 meters tall and has a beard and a bulge under his bikini bottoms, has outraged some customers who are now calling for a boycott. So I think it's a bit different to the Rip Curl situation. Are you going to be boycotting Bonds as well uh, for the fact that they are modeling women's clothing by using non-binary or transgender men? Uh, do you think it's an insult to women to have this type of individual who is bearded, long hair, dressed in women's clothing? Or is this just Bonds giving a nod to the transgender LGBTQI plus community during a Pride Month style event. So that's the kind of two separate views of this online. I'd love to know your thoughts about this. And on that topic, we also had the da a dad in uh, Geelong pull their daughter out of an elite school. Now this is a co-ed school, an elite co-ed school. And they've pulled their daughter out of that school because, you know, the parents didn't know that this was happening. But uh, a transgender student, so this is a male student who's transitioning into becoming a female, has been put into the female dormitory, so the where, the, where the females are staying. So let me read this article. One Geelong grammar parent has gone to extreme lengths to remove his daughter from the school after learning she would be boarding with a transgender student. However, other students at the prestigious co-educational boarding school are standing by their year nine peer, who has been transitioning from male to female over a long period of time. The student will be living in a female dormitory at Geelong's Grammar Timbertop campus, a move that has enraged one parent who drove from interstate to remove his daughter from the high country campus. It's understood the father was upset 
The school did not notify him of the student's presence in his daughter's dorm. One parent who spoke to the Herald Sun said there was support for the student, but we are concerned we were not told about the situation. The student who is transitioning is a long-term member of the Geelong grammar community and a long-term boarder. So yeah, interesting um, how these issues are kind of, you know, in every facet of our lives now, whether it's in schools, in the brands that we buy, you know, people are having to make decisions around what they're comfortable with. And in this instance, this parent has said, no, I am not comfortable with a transgender, a, a male that is now transitioning to a female being put in the same dormitory as his daughter at this private school. Let me know if you think this dad did the right thing. Now, the other day I talked with you guys about Tucker Carlson being in Russia and all the rumors around the fact that he would be in, uh, interviewing Vladimir Putin. Well, Tucker himself has now confirmed that he will be indeed interviewing Russian President Vladimir Putin. Let's see, have a look at what Tucker is saying. We're in Moscow tonight. We're here to interview the president of Russia, Vladimir Putin. We'll be doing that soon. There are risks to conducting an interview like this, obviously. So we thought about it carefully over many months. Here's why we're doing it. First, because it's our job. We're in journalism. Our duty is to inform people. Two years into a war that's reshaping the entire world, most Americans are not informed. They have no real idea what's happening in this region, here in Russia or 600 miles away in Ukraine. But they should know. They're paying for much of it in ways they might not fully yet perceive. Yeah, you can go watch that video. It goes for about four minutes. I'm not going to play the whole thing now, but as you can uh, imagine, <laughs> there's certain elements within America, especially who are losing their minds over this. And of course, the mainstream media political class in the US, especially from those in the progressive or the left, are losing their minds. Let's just read some of the reactions online. This is a bit of a tame one from a CNN reporter. Does Tucker Carlson really think we journalists haven't been trying to interview President Putin every day since his full-scale invasion of Ukraine? It's absurd. We'll continue to ask for an interview just as we have for years now. This is from a, I think this person might be Russian. Unbelievable. I, I am like hundreds of Russian journalists who have had to go into exile to keep reporting about the Kremlin's war against Ukraine. The alternative was to go to jail. And now this son of a bitch is teaching us about good journalism shooting from the $1,000 a night Ritz suit in Moscow. Moscow. Uh, some PhD. So that's interesting. Elon Musk was in, involved in the planning of Tucker Carlson's interview of Putin. He likely agreed to the arrangement because of the viewers it'll bring in. So he's using his platform to sell airtime to a war criminal who wants to undermine our country. Now, the criticism of Elon Musk here is that this interview will be hosted on X, right? Many platforms like YouTube, uh, you know, Facebook, they would censor this type of interview. Even the media won't play this type of interview, most likely. So it's going to be hosted on X and Elon is behind his platform being used for this free speech purpose. Uh, this is Anne saying, Anne Applebaum. Many journalists have interviewed Putin who also makes frequent widely covered speeches. Carlson's interview is different because he's not a journalist. He's a propagandist with a history of helping autocrats conceal corruption. Anyway, I think it's going to be an interesting interview. I will bring you guys updates on when that interview does air. But we've got to ask ourselves, why do they want to hear from Putin, right? We've, we've seen all types of leaders being uh, interviewed. Gren Greenwald brought up a perfect example of CNN interviewing Osama bin Laden, right? We've seen um, Saddam Hussein interviewed. All types of leaders get interviewed because we want to see their views on issues. And it's a part of the journalistic uh, tradition of interviewing people, regardless of whether you agree with them or not, right? We pride ourselves on that in the West. But maybe this might give you some clues why people don't want to hear from Putin. Let's have a listen to what Putin said during one of his uh, last interviews he gave, he gave to Western media. It, ask you, it you may matter. just ask you a direct question. Did you order Alexei Navalny's assassination? Of course not. We don't have this kind of habit of assassinating anybody. That's one. Number two is, I want to ask you, did you order the assassination of the woman who walked into the Congress and who was shot and killed by a policeman? Do you know that 450 individuals were arrested after entering the Congress and they didn't go there to steal a laptop? They came with political demands. 450 people have been detained. You're talking about the capital. They're looking at jail time between 15 and uh, 25 years. And they came to the Congress with political demands. Isn't that persecution for political opinions? Yeah, maybe that's why they don't want to hear from Putin, because some of the things he says 
a bit uncomfortable for countries like the US and other parts of the West where they pretend that they're above all of this, that there is some perfect example, a shining light in the world, when really, when you look at under the surface, many of those same problems that people like Putin are accused of, you can find in the West, right? The US is right now descending into a banana republic, if you see the way that the court system is being used to go after President Donald Trump to stop him from running an election, right? If Putin was doing something like that, we'd be like crying about the end of democracy. Anyway, guys, that's the episode for today for the news vlog. If you're enjoying this show, please consider subscribing on my YouTube at The Real Rukshan. So hit that subscribe button. You can also hit the notification bell if you want to know when I put up these videos. You can also find me on X, Facebook, Rumble, Odyssey at The Real Rukshan. See you guys tomorrow.